don't know why they call it potluck, but it's this Friday at my house, and Diane, Melvin, and Sherry are all making something. This Friday? At 7. Oh, I can't make it. I have other plans. Plans? Is that going to be poker? Yeah. Damn. Well, at least Collier and his burp buddies play till Henry passes out. What do you mean you have other plans? Do they play Texas Hold'em stud, follow the queen? I don't know, and I'm not sure they do either after that first six-pack disappears. It isn't another date, is it? Mm-mm. I'm just going out with some friends. Oh? What friends? A couple of new girlfriends and Kara's little sister, Cassandra. Do you remember her? Did she play Angela Davis in her high school play? That's her. Invite them. Who? All of them. Invite all of them. I'm not sure that's a good idea. Sure it is. Any friend of yours is a friend of mine, right? Not necessarily. Oh, come on. Give me that mail, would you? It'll be a hoot. Alarm. Late. No breakfast. Sorry. <clears throat> Bill? Graham, you're gonna be late for your ex parte hearing. In what case? Oh, hmm. God. Whoever it is, bill them quickly. We need the money. It's fixed. Five years later, but it's fixed. Do you know who your opposing counsel is on your hearing today? Another insurance company, Stiff. Not this time. Scott Monroe of Monroe, Myers and Kearns, D.C. Do you know him? Oh, yeah. I've gone up against him a couple of times in D.C. He's a shark. Guess I better change clothes then, huh? Tell me about the original case. I won it. About a year ago, got a million five from some insurance company. Uh, they denied Margaret Turner's 17-year-old son, Steve, the chance to live another year. Wouldn't agree to pay for some new experimental-type drug. He died a week before graduating high school. Better? From AIDS. Blood transfusion. Monroe didn't try the original case. Mm -mm. But he comes all the way down here just to file paperwork for a new trial. Yeah. Graham, do you mind if I come along? Sure. Hey, maybe later we can uh, go hear that new blues trio at Ruby D's. That's tempting. Let's see how it goes with Monroe. Putting a stay in the middle of this thing to save my life. Here you go. Thanks, anyway. Sure. Diane? Oh, don't worry about it. I'll just do a jello mold. I'm inviting Renee and her friends to the party Friday night. Why? I thought it'd be fun. Why? Well, Diane, now that you're all grown up, I think you might like Renee. Maybe even her friends. Aren't all her friends black? Come on, Diane, you can say it. Black. That's right. All of Renee's friends are black, and all of your friends are white. Yes, but, I knew you could do it. But, Emmy, I just think... I think... It's just gonna spoil the party's chemistry. Well, Diane, I failed chemistry twice. Maybe the third time's the charm. What are you gonna cook? I don't know. I hadn't even thought about it. Emmy, we don't even like the same food they do. No one likes your pot roast, Diane. And what do you mean, they? And what about the music? Don't they all listen to that Soul Sister stuff? We don't even read the same magazines. Get a grip, Diane. It's a party, not a summit meeting. Your Honor, I take it that Mr. Monroe is not only here to recount his client's loss of $1.5 million in our courts. Now, that's correct, Your Honor. I am here, however, to submit additional research by my firm, uh, revealing that juror number eight has contracted the AIDS virus, giving him an overdose of bias in this case. Now, since the verdict of, of which Mr. Pierce is so proud was determined by the legal minimum of a nine to three vote, the loss of juror number eight would change that to eight to three, thereby making it a hung jury and reason itself for a new trial. 
Besides Mr. Monroe's word, Your Honor, about juror number eight's condition, is there any proof that might validate? Your uh, validation. Mr. Pierce? At this time, Your Honor, I will stipulate that subject to verification of where this information... Uh, your, your Honor, um, Ms. Jackson, and I know from our previous encounters, the, the scrutiny of the public can be so awfully harsh and unnecessarily brutal, so I'm also requesting that this information be seized. Your Honor, if the information that Mr. Monroe is presenting is accurate, we agree that all such files gladly be sealed. If you're questioning the authenticity of my information, Renee, I've already prepared the necessary paperwork to depose the juror and his doctor. I'm sure you have. Scott, but the more relevant information is the actual date that juror number eight contracted AIDS, which would require more discovery from both of us, because if it was after the trial, it would have absolutely no bearing. Ms. Jackson, I think that's enough Law 101 for the day. Anything else, Mr. Monroe? Uh, no, Your Honor. Mr. Pierce? What the hell was that about? He could have phoned all that in. <laughs> He hasn't changed. It's still grandstanding in theatrics. I'm talking about you, Renee. Why did you intercede? This is my case. What? Oh, I'm sorry, Graham, but I'd like to assist you on this one. I think I can handle it. I know that, but I've played his game before. I know how to handle him. The law is the law, Renee. With Monroe, it's not about the law. It's about how he makes the jury feel about the law. I'll try and keep that in mind. I'm Birdie, I'm 11. And me too. I'm Renee. Is that your boss's daughter? No. She's my best friend. Her name's Amy. She plays baseball. How come she has to sleep in my bed, Mama? It's like I told you before, Renee. Your daddy is helping Miss Frances May, and until he's finished doing so, both she and her daughter are our guest and will be treated as such. Now, that's that. It was the sixth time that I came to the city and tried registering to make my votes. It, it took all us ladies off the bus, Mr. Jackson. They said they was arresting us because the school bus was too yellow. Oh. Thank you, honey. What happened to your face? Renee, that's enough. Go on now, baby. Would you like some coffee? Yes, please, ma'am. Somebody hit your mama? Punches of times. I have a radio. Want to listen? Sure. So you're gonna take the case away from him? It's what I would have done in D.C. I wouldn't have thought twice about it. Well, it's not exactly how to win friends and influence people down here. What the hell is this? Are you still having that party? Just look up and tell me what kind of spices I'm supposed to put in here. So I guess things get kind of personal inside the belt loop. Belt way. Whatever. It does. Try cumin. Basically, he kicked my ass and enjoyed it. Ouch, hell. Coming. I should have known that. Spinning articles everywhere, making me out to be an overzealous, bra-burning, black civil rights wacko from the say yeah yeah yeah. Well, I pushed a big major button there, huh? Okay. Taste. Too much salt. I knew it. What is it? You know, it's. I mean, since I've been home, it's like. I don't know. What? It feels like I've taken 20 steps back into the past. I'm afraid to become what I was in D.C., which was a damn good lawyer. Well, I'll tell you. Collier has a saying. He says to me, Mary Elizabeth, it's like the Marines. Be the best you can be, and then blow the hell out of anybody who gets in your way. All right, now, try. Mmm. Oh, well, now, does this mean that you and your other friends are going to come to my party at 7 o'clock Friday night? Please don't be late. Okay, we'll be there. 